Rays have had a good season against the Tampa Bay Rays. They lost one nothing last night, but they have a 10 7 advantage over Joe Madden's Rays in the 2014 season. The first time they have won the season series since 2006 against the Tampa Bay Rays. Take a look at the lineup for the Rays. It's Sopras de Jesus, Longoria, Loney, and Will Myers. And then down in that sixth spot is Matt Joyce, the left fielder. And the Blue Jays haven't been able to get him out this year. He's at 359 against them. Different story for R.A. Dickey against Jose Molina. Molina just one for 15 with six strikeouts against the knuckleballer. Making his 31st start of the season, and he pitches deep into the ball game. He's only had six no decisions this season. 12 and 12, 384 earned run average. Got to get that knuckleball over tonight. Zobris goes after the first pitch, and if you're wondering why Zobris is batting right-handed, he's a switch hitter, and we have seen him go back and forth literally in the middle of a game. He will switch from at bat to at bat depending on how he feels against Dickey. Yeah, he says he just doesn't feel comfortable sometimes. He might not be seeing the ball from the left side, so he'll flip over to the right side. There's a base hit past Danny Valencia. Pilar over to try to cut it off, but Zobris is headed for second with a leadoff double here in the first. Defense is always important behind R.A. Dickey as they put a lot of balls in play. Good speed in the outfit with Pilar Ghost and Bautista from left to right. Danny Valencia continues to play third base in the absence of Brett Lurie. Reyes and Goins up the middle. Lind is at first base making his 34th start. And Josh Tolley is the knuckleball catcher for the former gold glover, R.A. Dickey. You talk about defense important. R.A. Dickey is a fly ball pitcher with that knuckleball. So the outfield is very important. Really, Anthony Ghost in center field. There's going to be a lot of balls played. In the middle of the diamond, a lot of fly balls. Anthony Ghost is going to be key defensively. Ghost made a nice running catch last night, traveling a long way to take extra bases away. David DeJesus goes after the first pitch. Interesting that the Rays are coming out swinging against R.A. Dickey. We've seen him them do that against R.A. Dickey. If you remember that back in April in the game that was down at Tropicana Field, they came out swinging, not wasting any time. At the beginning of the season, and other times we'll see them try to work the count and get that pitch count up. Literally, it is a day-to-day -day approach. Whenever you're facing a knuckleballer like Dickey, depends on how he feels and how good that knuckleball is, and then whether or not the hitters are picking it up. Well, if they've been watching his last couple of starts, his knuckleball has been really good. It's been moving and dancing all over the place, and he kept it in the strike zone. Bouncing ball, Lind waits on it at first. He'll go to the bag. The Jesus is out. Zobris moves to third on the productive at bat by the number two hitter. So that'll bring Evan Longoria to the plate. Longoria in the three spot. 20 homers and 85 RBIs. He's at just 222 against R.A. Dickey. Now this is where Josh Tolley really gets put into a tough situation early on first inning. He hasn't caught a lot of the knuckleballs just yet in this ball game. Longoria is going to drive in the first run of the game. Another first pitch swing from Array and Longoria gets the RBI as Ogres comes in to score. Leads the team in RBIs and that's why he's a productive hitter. You knew he was going to try and keep the ball in the middle of the diamond with a runner at third base. Less than two outs, the infield playing back. He's just going to make contact with a ground ball and gets himself an RBI. For a team that has struggled to score runs this season, Tampa Bay made it look easy. A double, a ground ball to first, and a ground ball to short. One nothing raise. Tampa Bay has averaged 3.8 runs a game this season. That's 15th in the American League, the lowest. Another first pitch swing. James Loney lifts a high pop up. Pilar, the left fielder. Only seven pitches for Dickey, but Tampa Bay has taken a 1 0 lead. The leadoff double comes in to score.
against Nathan Carnes in the Rays bullpen. They'll try to do a better job today offensively. Top of the order, Jose Reyes. He's got good numbers against the Rays starter, Jeremy Hellickson. 7 for 18. He's hit a double and a home run against Hellickson. And right behind Hellick, right behind Reyes, Jose Bautista. He's got terrific numbers against Tampa Bay. 22 home runs and 75 RBIs in 100 games. And hopefully Bautista will continue that ratio today. He's at 357 against the starter, Jeremy Hellickson. He's had a lot of success against Hellickson. He's also hit three home runs against him. Hellickson will be making his 11th start for the race since July the 7th. That was the day that he was reinstated from the disabled list. He's recovering from arthro arthroscopic surgery on his right elbow. That was back in January. The Blue Jays know all about Hellickson. He has faced them 14 times in his career. And you can see he's got reverse splits. Righties are hitting much better than the lefties. Defensively, it's Joyce Kiermaier and Myers in the outfit for Tampa Bay. Well, Glover at third base is Evan Longoria. Escobar and Zobris up the middle, only at first base. And the former Blue Jay, Jose Molina, will catch the goal. Glover, Jeremy Hellickson. And a very athletic and a very aggressive center fielder this afternoon. That's Kevin Kiermaier, who plays center field. Watch him, how he goes after the baseball. And a first pitch swing from Reyes. This is a high fly ball, but it's going to stay in the park. Reyes went after that first pitch and flies out to right. Ellickson is a fly ball pitcher. He will give up his share of fly ball outs himself. What the Blue Jays are going to have to do is make sure that that ball comes over the middle of the plate. When it does, they have hit him hard in the past. Jose Bautista, we mentioned his numbers. He's 10 for 28 against Jeremy Alex with three home runs. We have talked about Hellickson and what he tries to do to Bautista. Hellickson doesn't throw hard and he throws an awful lot of change ups and an awful lot of breaking balls. I think Bautista's looking off speed against him. And away, too. I, I think he'll try and work and stay away from Jose's power. He'll make his share of mistakes on the middle part of the plate or middle end, and that's when Jose really hurts him. Stan away finds that outside corner. Bautista has hit 305 in his last 15 games. Line to Longoria. Hellickson made a mistake, and Bautista once again hit it hard, but right to the third baseman. They wanted that fastball away. It looks like they're trying to establish that fastball to Bautista away, and he missed his spot. And it's down and in, and Jose hammers it. Another fastball. He wanted it away. You can see Molina sets up away. It's down and in, and Jose covers it. But it's right at the gold glover for an out. Longoria. Favoring that pool side, and now he'll go straight away at short with Lind hitting. Adam Lind batting 324 for the season. Just four home runs. Two of those four home runs have come against Tampa Bay, including a home run in his first at bat this season. Jeremy Hellickson, he is the graybeard of this rotation. He's 27 years old. He came up in 2010 with the Rays. It was a fifth round pick by Tampa Bay in 2005. He's from Des Moines, Iowa. You see what he's done in his 14 starts against the Jays. This year they have really hit him hard in two starts, an ERA approaching seven. And he needs. Pinpoint control, I think. He just doesn't throw the ball by you. Let's take a little closer look at this afternoon's starter for Tampa Bay, the usage. There's the fastball, 50% of the time, and I think he has to establish that, and he's got to pinpoint it, throw it where he needs to to set up his changeup. He's going to throw that almost 30% of the time, that changeup. At times, I think he falls in love with and throws it too much, and batters go up there looking for it. He'll drop in that curveball. He's basically a three-pitch pitcher. But he needs his command and control. 
See that picture there with the grip on the baseball. That's a circle changeup, and that truly is his bread and butter. That's his out pitch. That went in Carnacion. Batting 262 for the season with 30 homers. This is a tough guy, Alexson, because he's so deliberate and so patient. Sometimes hitters have a tendency of tensing up before he delivers the ball. He gets set in that batter's box, and you have to wait so long for him to throw it. That's where you've got to pace yourself. And if he's throwing that ball away, I think you have to hit the ball the other way. This is popped up on the infield. Loney the first base, but Hellickson is there. I don't know what Hellickson's doing. Loney was camped under it. Hellickson banged into the first baseman, but the inning is over. Blue Jays get a two-out walk. James Loney came down from first. He's calling for it. Hellickson didn't react. Blue Jays on Sportsnet, brought to you by the all-new 2015 Honda Fit. Fit your lifestyle, fit your fun, fit whatever. And by Home Hardware, homeowners helping homeowners with expert advice. It's a rainy afternoon in Toronto. The roof is closed at Rogers Center. Will Myers takes the first pitch strength. Myers has two career hits against Ari Dickey. They were in his first two at bats this season. If you remember that first two pitches he saw he got two hits. It's off the end of the bat. Kevin Pilar over in the alley makes the catch one down. And it's an aggressive approach this afternoon. You're seeing from the Tampa Bay Rays and what Ari Dickey will do then. He'll see that he'll start changing speeds with that knuckleball stick. Start taking a little something off of it. And they have certainly been aggressive early on. Matt Joyce, the left fielder, will step in against Dickey. Joyce has hit 359 against the Blue Jays this season. Boy, that was a good knuckleball. A lot of late movement there. That's a first pitch strike, Joyce. One of the Rare exception so far in this game. He took that first pitch. Joyce is not a free swinger. He'll take his pitches. He'll take a look at Ari Dickey this afternoon. Everybody else, though, have been very aggressive early on. Joyce, for his career, is hit just 244 against the Jays. So this year it's been a totally different story for him. A 359 average, and he takes another close pitch inside. Two and one. Joyce came to the Rays in a trade with the Detroit Tigers. He grew up in the Tampa Bay area and has returned to play for the hometown team. 
to pitch. Joy's not happy with that one, but if you look at pitch trackers, it's the same spot as strike number one. That four overlapping number one there. You have to swing with two strikes, and even though that was maybe off the plate inside, you can't take a chance. That knuckleball, Bob the dart back over the plate. Joyce was an all star in 2011. He had 19 home runs and drove in 75 that year. Vicky with his first strikeout of the afternoon. All right, Dickey has pitched well over the last couple of months, and when you look at his last 13 starts, he's got a very good ERA. Opponents hitting just over 230. The whip is respectable, and his strikeouts per nine very good. He's won his last three decisions. He's been finishing up very strong. He's looking to win his third consecutive start this afternoon, and one of the things that he does when we talk about it in that opening is he goes deep. He gives you innings. He pitches deep into the ball game. To give you a chance to win, he's only had six starts this season where he did not have a decision. This is his 31st start of the year. You now Escobar fouls it out of play. That's what you want from your starters. Somebody's going to pitch and keep you in the ball game, not get knocked out early. He's going to shade save the bullpen for you. And there's only been one time over his last 16 starts where he hasn't thrown at least six innings for the Blue Jays. Solid as a rock for him this year. And at Milwaukee on the 20th of August, he went five and two thirds. Hit hard, Reyes hits short. In time, good inning for R.E. Dickey, free up, three down in the second. Blue Jays are down by a run. When we come back, Danny Valencia will take on Jeremy Hellickson. From Sportsnet.ca, cover every angle of the Toronto Blue Jays. Breaking news, photos, videos, and weekly chats. A one stop shop for everything Blue Jays. The Blue Jays rundown only on Sportsnet.ca. The Blue Jays bats silenced by Carnes in loss to Rays, and certainly they were silenced. Nathan Carnes threw 114 pitches yesterday, 85 fastballs. He was coming at him, and boy, did he. Spot his fastball very well. Jay Happ, he matched him pitch for pitch, but he didn't get any run support. And Happ gave up just one run. It was a home run to Ryan Hannigan. And that was it. And 85 fastballs, that's about what we thought when we were talking about percentage wise of fastballs in that game for Carnes. Talking to some of the Blue Jays around the batting cage this morning. He said he was filthy from the second inning on. 
Brian Hannigan was the catcher in that game and he became the first raised catcher to catch a shutout and hit a home run for the game's only run. It's the first time he's done it in his career and it's happened three other times this season. Oh what a play by Longoria from his knees on time. That's how you win gold gloves folks. That was two for sure and Longoria stretched out. And takes one away from Danny Valencia, his counterpart, robbed by the opponent. Third base. So watch the jump and how quick and how low he stays at third base. And then it's just a bounce over to first base. Watch how low he is. Picks it right out of the air. Longoria, multiple gold gloves down there at third base. Two time gold glover. Shows you why. Josh Tolley, the catcher. Let me finish up on that note about Hannigan hitting a home run and a one nothing win catching a shutout. Evan Gaddis did it twice this year the Atlanta Braves catcher. Once against Miami once against Philadelphia and Yadier Molina. Also caught a shutout and hit a home run in a one nothing game. And that's quite an accomplishment it's pointed out in the Rays pregame notes that. Johnny Bench didn't do it in seventeen hundred and forty two games. Catching in his major league career. And I know how catchers are. Which one do you think he was more excited about? The home run or catching a shutout? The shutout. Yeah. Yeah. Just catching a shutout is exactly what Hannigan is all about. But to finish up the final note on that, it's also pointed out that not only did Johnny Bench not do it, neither did Jorge Posada, Ted Simmons, Thurman Munson, Lance Parrish, Buck Martinez, or Greg's on. <laughs> little needle right at the end there, you two. Huh? Little no, indeed we didn't. <laughs> oh, that Rick Vaughn, he is on he top of everything. He is something else, isn't he? He's the PR director for the Tampa Bay Rays. He's all over that. Quick to point it out that we didn't do it. I'm surprised he didn't come up here and tell you that <laughs> to your face. <laughs> Kevin Pilar pulls it foul. It's 0 and 2 on Pilar. Pilar had faced Nathan Carnes in the minor leagues and that he really saw a different pitcher yesterday and that he was locating his fastball very well to both sides of the plate. 0 and 2. We have. Quite a contrast in the pitching matchup, not only in what they throw, but how they go about it. Jeremy Hellickson and R.A. Dickey. Dickey takes 18.3 seconds between pitches. Hellickson 26.5. Hellickson much more deliberate than the knuckleballer. And Dickey's one of the quickest workers in baseball. I think Mark Burley's number one and Dickey's two in pace. And David Price is the slowest. And Hellickson second slowest. Yeah, it's interesting that they would be so deliberate, and it really creates problems for your infield defense. There's a changeup and another strikeout. Back-to-back -back strikeouts for Hellickson. He retires the side in order. We'll go to the third. So one nothing Rays lead.
Messenger Bag Day is presented by Mr. Sub. Tomorrow, the Rays and Blue Jays will wrap up this three-game series. It's a 107 start. The first 20,000 fans will receive a Blue Jays Messenger Bag. Call the Jays for tickets at 416-341-1234 or log online at BlueJays.com and get your tickets for the Blue Jays Messenger Bag Day, all presented by Mr. Sub. That'll be tomorrow. Great gift to have for all the kids going back to school. Kevin Kiermaier. He is in center field, batting 270. He's got 10 home runs. Goes after this and pulls it through the left side. Kiermaier with a leadoff single. Bautista throws behind him, and Kiermaier goes to second. <laughs> Bautista saw Kiermaier take the big turn, took a shot behind him, but Kiermaier runs with his head up, saw the throw coming, and takes advantage. It was almost like he was anticipating that, that he was going to take a big turn, and he knew that Jose was going to throw behind him, and as soon as Jose wound up, Kiermaier took off for second base. It's a clear base hit. Jose knows that this kid is very aggressive, and there he goes. I think even if the throw is on target, I don't think Adam Lynn has enough time to catch it and get the ball to second base, and there he goes. What an aggressive player. He did it perfectly because he kept his body side straddle. He looked right at Bautista. Once that throw was on his way to first, he took advantage. It is not an error on Bautista. It is second on the throw. He went back to make a throw at first base, and Kiermaier just took advantage. So it's a single for Kiermaier. Molina, number nine hitter, we mentioned he's one for 15 against R.A. Dickey. He's trying to hit the ball on the right side. There's no question about that. He has slowed everything down in his swing just to poke the ball the other way. You don't have to hit it that hard because Kiermaier can do the rest. You know, if he's swinging away like that and he's giving himself up, wouldn't it be easier just to bunt the ball? Just all you have to do is get it on the ground and let that speed do, do everything else for you. Yeah, I agree with you. If you're going to do that and really give up your at-bat as dramatically as he is, you should have squared around early and just bunted it. Yeah, you're one for 15. One for 15, so just get it on the ground. It does not have to be perfect. Three for his last 33. So Molina looking for a productive out here at a minimum. Gets a piece of it and stays alive. Molina played with the Blue Jays 2010 and 2011. A total of 112 games with the Jays. He hit 263 while with the Blue Jays. Might have broken his bat, and he did. <laughs> Firewood. Not only is he having a rough at bat, but he loses a good piece of lumber. Molina is now 38 years old. Of course, his younger brother, Yadier Molina, is in St. Louis. Jose started his career with the Chicago Cubs. He was a 14th round pick by the Cubs in 1993. part of the plate. No stride. He's just using his hands, just trying to push the ball the other way. Advance that runner. Kiermaier's at second base. He had a single to right and advanced on the throw to first. R.A. Dickey and the Blue Jays are down one to nothing. Kevin Longoria with a ground ball to short drove in the only run of this game so far. There's that ground ball he was looking for. Goins gets a good hop. Molina is out. He does his job. 
One down. Blue Jays on Sportsnet, brought to you by the all-new 2015 Honda Fit. Fit your lifestyle, fit your fun, fit whatever. This has traditionally been when the Rays would use that safety squeeze. And that ball gets away from Tolley, bounces back toward him, but Kiermaier slides in safely. That's the challenge of having a knuckleballer on the mound. You always got to be on your toes running the bases, and the Rays have taken a 2 nothing lead. You reach back for a little something more to try to get a little bit more on that knuckleball because you need a strikeout. This one tumbles away from Tolley, bounces in front of him, all the way back to the backstop. Kiermaier reads it, and with his speed, he's going to score easily. A couple of fundamentally sound at-bats and production offensively for the Rays. Well, you talk about manufacturing a run. Kiermaier had a single to right. Then he watched Bautista's throw go back behind him, and he moved to second. Then Molina hit a ground ball on the right side, and then the wild pitch. The Rays have manufactured two runs in this game. Sobris is out. They don't have the power that we're used to seeing last several years, so they've got to use speed and good at bats. A lot like it was uh, when Joe Madden first took over the team. They did not have a lot of a lot of power, so they would use the the squeeze, the, the safety squeeze. They would double steal. They would steal a lot of bases. David DeJesus. He had a productive at bat in the first inning. He moves over us from second to third on a ground ball to first base. Upstairs, it's two and zero. Oh. De Jesus broke in with the Kansas City Royals. He was sixth in the rookie of the year voting in 2004 when he hit 287 for Kansas City. That's the year Bobby Crosby of Oakland won the rookie of the year and Alex Rios finished fifth. Two balls and a strike, two outs. Tampa Bay has scored a run here in the third, taking a two-nothing lead. That fastball missed upstairs. Now three and one. Try something different right there, Dickey. That fastball trying to surprise De Jesus. Told himself to stay on that back leg a little bit longer. Went a little bit too quick. That's why that ball was high. There's a high pop. That's going to be deep into the seats out of play. Kevin Longoria has an RBI so far. He grounded out to the shortstop in the first and drove home Ben Zobris with the first run of the game. Full count on the Jesus. That's going to be into the seats down the left side. Ball four. Take a look at the rotation since August 24th, the ERA, and Stoneman has been really on a roll, as has Drew Hutchison. Dickey's been there with him as well. A 180 earned run average for RA since August 24th. Mark Burley has pitched much better of late. Great, great numbers right there from those starters. An ERA 
those type of ERAs and they're giving them innings also again six innings pitched in 18 straight games by the Blue Jays longest such streak since 1998 by the starters Yeah, and that's how you put together winning streaks you get your starters to go deep into the game and figure out a way to score a couple of runs. Yeah, it doesn't take many when your starters are posting an ERA of two and a half over their last 18 games. There's a drive down the left side. This is trouble if it's fair. It bangs up against the wall. Pilar will play it back in, and they're going to stop De Jesus. He stops at third. Longoria with a ringing one hop double off the wall in left. His 24th double of the season. Now he's seeing the ball this afternoon. He got an RBI and a ground out his first time up, and then gets that first bit knuckleball over the middle of the plate. And one thing about Tampa Bay. They don't take anything for granted. They are thinking about scoring all the time. Tom Foley was sending De Jesus. He was watching the throw come in from Kevin Pillar. He was sending him, but then threw up the stop sign when Pillar's cutoff throw went right to Reyes. James Loney, he flew out to left field to end the first inside. And of course, this is again where Tolley really has to be on his toes. Kiermaier scored on a wild pitch this inning. It's such a hard knuckleball, 80 miles an hour, apparently speaking, and he's got movement on top of the ball moving all over the place. You don't have a whole lot of time to react to it. It's a fly ball. Bautista from right. Goins from second gets there and makes the catch that ends the inning. So Dickey leaves a pair. Tampa Bay has a 2 nothing lead. When we come back, it'll be Ryan Goins. Then Anthony goes back to the top of the order. Jose Reyes. Jeremy Ellickson has a 2 nothing lead early. the best way to follow the action of the September pennant races is with MLB.com at bat. At bat brings you baseball wherever you are with live look-ins, replays, reviews, scores, stats, and highlights. The app is available on the iPhone, iPad, iPod Touch, Android, and BlackBerry. At bat is available for $9.99 for September and October. Visit BlueJays.com for more details. Of course, there are a lot of great games going on Today and later on tonight, they are in the middle of the first in Baltimore. It's a scoreless game. Miguel Gonzalez on the mound for the Orioles. Of course, Baltimore won a doubleheader yesterday. They beat the Yankees two to one in extra innings and five to nothing. It's almost like the more bad news the Orioles get, the better they play. Weeders, Machado, and now Chris Davis out of the lineup for Baltimore, and they just keep winning. 
Ryan Goins made a terrific catch to end the top half of this inning. He takes a strike. It's 0-2. Yeah, we didn't get a chance to talk about that because it was the end of the inning, but that was a heck of a play by Goins. He went a long way. Jose Bautista was not going to catch it. Neither was Adam Lynn at first base. He had a great angle on it and just ran it down. Breaking ball that gets away from Molina. Goins will reach first on the strikeout. So Goins chased the curveball into there. You can see him talking to himself, but he was heads up and reaches first base on the strikeout and wild pitch. Molina just could not smother this ball. It's a curveball in the dirt. He goes down to try and block it, and it ricochets off of his arm. First the wrist, then the arm, and it gets away just enough for Goins to get the first base. So it's three straight strikeouts, but Goins is aboard with nobody out. Anthony Ghosts, number nine hitter. Ghost punts it up the first baseline, but pulls it foul. Had a good idea. But got out in front of it and pulled it into foul ground. Yeah, there's no way you want to bunt that ball to the left side with Longoria standing there. Take it up the right side. Now you got gold. Gold Glover's at third and on the mound, and Loney's no slouch at first base, so it's, it's almost got to be a perfect bunt. Outside, it's a ball and a strike. Hellickson is going to be around the plate, so if you do choose to play hit and run, he's not a bad guy to play hit and run against. Doesn't throw the ball hard, so he doesn't throw it by you, so you can do that if you want. The Rays don't turn a lot of double plays, though. And with Anthony Gosa's speed, he's not going to hit into a lot of double plays, so you might want to play for the beginning. See if he can pull one by Loney down the right field line. Cut on and missed. It's now two and two. Way inside and goes foul it off his leg, maybe even off his knee, that high up on his leg. And he's going to try to stretch it out, get the feeling back. Too close to take right there. He jammed him up with that fastball. Anthony was just a little late. It looked like it bounced off of his leg. And stepped off as he was getting the sign from Molina. Ghost is still feeling the impact of that foul ball, trying to take a little extra time. Hellickson is set now. Goins is at first. Outside. Full count. Reyes, the leadoff man, is on deck. Bautista behind him. Time Blue Jays haven't had a hit yet. Time to be aggressive right here. I would start that runner, taking my chances that Anthony's going to make contact. Molina's thrown out 27% of the runners this year. Try to make something happen. Not running. Ball is fouled down the left side. 
Cohen's was not running. Hellickson has three strikeouts in a row. And John Gibbons may be thinking that Ghost might be a strikeout candidate. Ghost has 55 strikeouts in 79 games coming into this ball game today. Up the middle base hit. Kiermaier comes in quickly and going stops at second. Up next, number seven, Jose Reyes. It's Junior Jays this Saturday. It's all presented by Boston Pizza. And as you can hear, the Junior Jays get to announce the lineups today. Just one of the many activities taking place on Junior Jays Saturdays. It's all presented by Boston Pizza. So Reyes steps in, runners at first and second, nobody out. He just missed the ball his last time up. First pitch of the game, he just missed it, a long fly ball to right field. See if Hellickson starts him off with some something off speed. Runs it out in front of home plate. Hellickson and Molina got their wires crossed. And that ball's in the right. Goins is going to score. Anthony Goes is being stopped at third. Molina and Hellickson were indecisive as to who was going to take that play. Molina came out, looked like he was going to take it, then he backed off, and by the time Hellickson picked it up, he threw it right into the base runner. And the off balance also. It's an off speed pitch. It looked like a change up on it right out in front of home plate. And on this carpet, that ball's going to roll away from the catcher. And there's the indecision right there. Hellickson looked like he was backing off. Molina did the same thing, and by the time Ellickson catches it, he throws it down the right field line. One run is going to score. Going to send goes to third as Golan scores, and Reyes in the scoring position himself. Reyes is credited with a base hit, and Air is charged on the pitcher. Goins comes in to score. It is second and third. Still nobody out for Bautista. We had mentioned Bautista's big numbers against Helixson. He lined out sharply to the third baseman his first time up. Came into this game 10 for 28, a 357 average against Jeremy Helix. Close it in on those 100 RBIs again for Bautista. Here is a great opportunity for him. Second and third, nobody out. Looking to do some damage right here. Blue Jays are on the board. Crossed him up through a couple pitches inside. He had worked him away in that first at bat. He is not afraid, as you see Bautista, runners in scoring position, 317. Helix is not afraid to throw that change up to the right handers. And again, the reverse splits the right handers have handled Helix in this year. They're hitting 329 against them with four home runs. Bautista right back to the mound. Ghost comes in to score. Bautista picks up an RBI. A base hit off the glove of Jeremy Hellickson. RBI number 97, and Bautista has tied it up at two all. Hellickson, let's go glove fielder. And that's two balls back to the mound this inning that he feels he should have had. One by Ghost, and now this one right back to him. And you can see how upset he is, and he knocks it down, slows it up just enough for Bautista to leg it out. And upset, and Blue Jays keep that inning alive. Still nobody out, two runs across. Hellickson had good position to feel that. He came across and was squared up the home plate. It was to his glove side, and it looked like he thought he had it. And then it bounced off his glove, and Bautista's able to reach. Still nobody out. Runners at the corners for Lynn. Helixson pitching just the 11th 
game of the season. He had elbow surgery in the offseason, did not start till late. Yeah, he had that surgery in January, made eight minor league starts, six rehabs, and then two after being optioned before the All Star break. So he's just getting his feet wet this year. Made his first start on the 8th of July against the Royals. Breaking ball scooped by Molina. Lind against the Rays has always hit them well. 361 this season for Lynn against Tampa Bay. He's got a 275 average, but 22 career home runs against Tampa Bay. Ground ball. Longoria will flip the second. They get one. That's all they're going to get. The shift took them out of the double play possibility because Escobar was away from the back. Longoria had to wait for Zobris, and all they could get was the force out at second. Yeah, you'll save some runs and you'll save some base hits, but at times, if the hitter crosses you up, hits it where you're not expecting it, you're not going to be able to turn two. Reyes scores the tie breaking run. Adam Lynn picks up the RBI. Zobris just had way too far to go to try and turn the double play. Blue Jays have scored three in the bottom of the third. And it all started with a strikeout and a wild pitch. Edward Encarnacion. Edwin popped out to the pitcher his first time up. Ball just outside the bag at third. You know, and here's another one, Buck. And when you talk about defensive play and positioning, if there's a ground ball to the left side, and Escobar or Longoria are going to field it, it's going to be a very tricky double play for Tampa Bay to try and turn because that Ben Zobrist, look where he is behind the bag. When that ball was hit on the ground, he was going towards the bag. As a fielder, you're going to have to hit a moving target. And that could spell trouble if it's the throw is offline just a little bit. Inside. If Zobras reacts to a ground ball hit to Escobar to his right and takes one step toward the shortstop, it's going to take himself out of the play at second. Look how far he has to go. And then as a fielder, you want to make sure he's there so you can throw him the ball and be accurate with it. It's very interesting. One and two. Inside. You played second base, and oftentimes I know you were probably instructed to show the infielder your hands. Give him a target here. Throw it here. And you would have to get to the bag. It's called double play depth. You'd have to get to the bag so you, they had a target where they where they were going to throw it. In the shift mode like that, you got a long way to go and you're you're moving. Carnacion strikes out. That's four strike shots for Hellickson, and this has been a rough inning. Hellickson got off to a decent start when he came back off the disabled list, and we mentioned that first start was the 8th of July, but his last three starts, he has really been hit hard. Giving up four home runs, he's got seven, almost seven runs of support. He just hasn't been able to get the, the opposition out. Last time out, five and a third innings against Baltimore. Six strikeouts. Danny Valencia was robbed of an extra base hit by Evan Longoria leading off the second. You mentioned Hellickson's last three starts. August 28th at Baltimore against the Orioles. August 2nd against the Jays and then against the Orioles once again. All three teams have been against the Orioles and the Blue Jays. Ten All three of runs. those starts. Ten earned runs in those three starts. Oh 
in his last start against the Blue Jays, Danny Valencia hit a home run. Valencia and Reyes both went deep against Hellickson down at Tropicana Field. And the problem that he had in that start, couldn't get his curveball over. Was not throwing it for strikes. Was not getting his change up over. And the Blue Jays sat back and just waited for him to come to him. He only lasted against the Blue Jays three and a third inning and charged for five earned runs and eight hits. Three and one. Boy, this has really pushed his pitch count up this inning. Just totally is on deck. Valencia is the seventh Blue Jay to bat this inning. Three and one wins at first. Tell you a lot of pitches this inning. And it's been a long inning and the infielders are starting to get back on their heels a little bit. Well you just wonder if the fact that. Helixson and so many of the pitchers are. So deliberate. That has something to do with the fact they don't turn any double plays. Just 84 double plays turn. This year by the Rays. Three and two. Hit into right. Myers calls for it. The inning comes to an end. But the Blue Jays take the lead. They score three runs against Jeremy Hellickson. And the air contributing to the three runs. Jamie and how about Brian McCann everybody was concerned about McCann that's his 19th home run he's got 65 RBIs in his first year in the American League. He's going to be just fine. Yeah he'll finish with 20. Finish with 70 RBIs or so. Which will put him right up there with the uh, other American League offensive catchers. Shane Green and Miguel Gonzalez the pitching matchup in Baltimore. Things are kind of getting jammed up in that wild card race. Baltimore has a comfortable lead in the division, 11 and a half games over the Blue Jays, but the wild card race is jamming up Oakland, Kansas City, Seattle. Three teams separated by half a game. Bounced up the third baseline. That'll move into foul territory. Let's take a look at the wild card race, and when you think back to Oakland this team has really fallen upon hard times. They have a half game lead over the Royals and the Mariners for that first wild card. They're even in the last column all with 66 losses. 
the Indians they're playing a double header today and it's a situation actually it's not the Indians it's Minnesota and the White Sox playing a double header but the Indians are there with the Blue Jays Cleveland Detroit has Cleveland this afternoon. Bobstein against Salazar. Verlander and Bauer will go tomorrow in the finale of that three game series. And what Oakland is doing or, or not doing right now, it, it's been epic. Really? Yeah, it really has been kind of a surprising turnaround. The Oakland A's got beat 4 2 last night in Seattle. James Paxson won his sixth game. Jason Hamill took the loss, and Hamill really hasn't done a thing no. for Oakland, nor has Samarja really. Nine and 22. We saw them in July out there, four game series, and you and I came away from that saying this is the best team in the American League right now. They were firing on all cylinders. That's right around the time they got Samarja, and then they went out and got John Lester. And something has gone wrong with the Oakland A's. They might not make the playoffs now. Yeah, and they are certainly in danger of falling out. Dickey strikes out Will Myers. It's the second strikeout for Dickey this afternoon. That's a high, hard knuckleball that strikes out Myers. Oakland finishes up with Gray and Hernandez today, Lester and Young tomorrow. Sonny Gray and Felix Hernandez. In Seattle today, and then John Lester and Chris Young tomorrow. Oakland is then off on Monday before they welcome in the Texas Rangers, then the Philadelphia Phillies. And that can be a trap. Mm -hmm. You trap get, the Phil get the Phillies in there and say, oh, well, it's the Phillies, they're out of it. But the Phillies have nothing other to do than play the spoiler role. If you look at the numbers, the straight numbers, Oakland has the easiest schedule to get into the playoffs. They got a, They got an outstanding chance, even though they're really cold right now. Nine wins in their last 31 games. There you go. <laughs> <laughs> That's More like right. it's one not over till it's over. That's for sure. <laughs> but you look at Oakland's schedule and the opposing teams they're playing. Their win percentage is 460. 28. Toughest in the league, so they have the third easiest schedule. Bautista coming over to his right. Thanks to Kitch. Well, let's take a look at that wild card race and the strength of schedule for the remaining teams. The Athletics are atop it, and there's the strength of schedule on the right. The Mariners have the toughest schedule, followed by the Blue Jays. If you look at the 557 strength of schedule percentage for the Mariners' opponents, and then the Blue Jays are right behind them. Yeah, that, that is the strength of schedule of the remaining opponents for the teams that are in the wild card right there. Mariners have the toughest schedule. Look who has the second toughest. The Blue Jays at 553, and that's why we showed you that. So we still have a chance, huh? Absolutely. <laughs> Anything can happen in this game of baseball. We all know that. You know, Escobar bats with two outs. Reyes timed it perfectly and finishes off the inning. Escobar made a bid for a two out hit it. Reyes with a big smile timed his jump perfectly. So you say there's a chance? There's still a chance. The defense been on their toes early behind Mickey.
big green chairs in a TV comfort zone our guests of TD. Welcome to the ballpark. Yeah, thank goodness we got a little roof over our head today. It's raining outside. While over in the Jays Care Community Clubhouse are folks from the Boys and Girls Club of Kawartha Lakes. Welcome to you. Hope you're having a good time here and we're running out of Saturdays. One more Saturday after this one and Jose Reyes he did a nice job timing his jump perfectly at short showing off at shortstop. Look how high he gets. He times it perfectly takes away a hit from. You know Escobar his counterpart at shortstop. Nice play. Reyes had a bunch single. This last time up contributing to that three run in. Josh Tolley. Takes one low it's a ball and a strike to the Blue Jays catcher. Tolley's had a good season under trying situations. It's tough to catch once every five days and have any kind of chance at the plate. You just have to scramble. You got to hustle. You got to fight. You got to do your extra work also. And that's what Josh does. He takes a lot of swings. He'll come out for early batting practice. He'll get his work done down in the cage before the ball came. Just trying to keep that bat sharp. And he has had his moments this year driving the ball the other way. There's one. And how about Escobar? Reyes, you can do it. I can do it too. Almost the same play. He's pointing into Reyes. And I saw what you did to me. And I got you back. <laughs> Everybody's smiling except the guy who hit it. Yeah, two guys. Yeah, he's not smiling because he had a hit taken away. He said, Yeah, you take me away. I'm going to get one of your guys. <laughs> That's a thing. When you only play once every five days, you hit a ball like that, you need that base hit. Kevin Pilar struck out his first time up. Escobar, 6 2, and he uses all of it to snare that line drive off the bat of Josh Tolley. Oh, and two, another curveball. Kevin Pilar struck out in the second inning. That was his 89th plate appearance. He hasn't walked. That's to start a season, and when you think about how long that is, it's amazing where he ranks as far as. Going up without a plate appearance, without a walk. 89 plate appearances, and he hasn't had a walk. And it'll be 90 now as he strikes out. Some question from Pilar, but that's the second out of the inning. Yeah, questioning that he might have foul tipped that ball and that it was smothered by Molina, but it's a strikeout. The fourth, of, excuse me, the fifth of the afternoon for Jeremy Ellickson. Mookie Wilson has the franchise record for plate appearances to start a season without a walk. He had 114 plate appearances when he first joined the Blue Jays in August of 89. Mookie could swing it. He, yeah. was, he was a free swinger too. Ryan Goins scored the first Blue Jays run. Drives this ball to center. Kiermaier over quickly gets there, and the inning is over. Three up, three down. We have played four. Blue Jays have a 3 2 lead. Now it's time for Blue Jays Central Update. Here's Jamie Campbell and Greg Zorn.
Museum in Cooperstown will be on display for fans tomorrow. The game is at 1.07 p.m. It'll be the final game of this three-game series. Robbie will be taking photos with the fans between 11.30 a.m. and 12.30 p.m. at the 200-level outfield. So make sure you get your tickets, and you can do that by calling the Jays at 416-341-1234. Or log online at BlueJays.com. Come and have your picture taken with Robbie Alomar in his Hall of Flame. That should be a big day tomorrow. Yeah. It's a great idea. I it think. is. And you know what? Robbie has really been accommodating for the Blue Jays and all the fans. And he has helped out with the clinics and he has made himself available. Kevin Kiermeyer is behind 0 and 2. He had a single and scored a run in the third. Chases that high knuckleball. Another strikeout for Dickey. That gives him three so far. That one's a hard knuckleball and it stayed on line. Not a lot of dancing on this one. It's up and out of the strike zone. Kiermaier comes up empty. Get those shutdown innings now that you have the lead, and that's what RA is starting to do. Molina goes after the first pitch and it's a little pop to the first baseman. Two quick outs here in the fifth. So that'll turn the lineup over. Ben Zobris had a leadoff double in his first at bat. So far, so good from the right side, so he'll stay batting as a right handed hitter. As we had mentioned earlier, he is a switch hitter that has oftentimes switched in the middle of a bat facing in the middle of a game facing Dickey. He might start out batting left handed and have a couple of uncomfortable bats and turn around and face him from the right side. We saw that down in Tampa the last time we faced the Tampa Bay Rays and R.A. Dickey was pitching against them. Anything that feels good, you know, when you're facing a guy like this. He can make things very uncomfortable for you. Ben Zobris and Ryan Goins have something in common. They both went to Dallas Baptist University. I asked Ryan if he had ever met Zobris before. He said, yeah, they worked out together in the offseason. And in fact, Ryan's coach at Dallas Baptist is Ben Zobris' brother-in-law. And they both played there at Dallas Baptist, and there have been some other major leaguers. Jason LaRue, former catcher with the Reds and the Cardinals, played there. Les Lancaster of the Cubs, he was a pitcher that pitched there. Ben Zobra's been a terrific major leaguer. Yes, yes. He uh, plays a lot of different positions. They Keen, very keen idea to go and get him in that trade with Houston. Had him throw in in there. Came from the Houston Astros in the Aubrey Huff deal, and he has been a very solid performer for Tampa. This guy that Joe Maddock can count on every day. They came from Houston in a July 2006 trade. And Joe Madden was just trying to see what he had in Ben Zobras and found out he had a terrific player. Full count, two outs. Dickey thought it was a strike. He was on his way to the dugout. Two out walk. This copyrighted telecast is presented by authority of Rogers Blue Jays Baseball Partnership and may not be reproduced or retransmitted in any form. The accounts and descriptions of this game may not be disseminated without the express written consent of Rogers Blue Jays Baseball Partnership. A little rainy afternoon in Toronto. The roof is closed and has been all day long here at Rogers Center. Zobris, given the second walk issued by Dickey this afternoon, that brings David DeJesus to the plate.
Line to Goins. Goins going to his right. Back hands it to end the inning. The Rays leave a base runner. R.A. Dickey through five has a one run lead. The defense has been on its toes all afternoon behind Dickey. Team anywhere with Rogers NHL Game Center Live. Get live out of market regular season games on your phone, laptop, or tablet. Live stream over a thousand games. Rogers NHL Game Center Live. And remember, the season begins October 8th. So make sure you check it out. Chance to follow your team no matter where you go, no matter where they're playing. I think that's going to be huge this year. You can watch the hockey anywhere, anytime. And Rogers will have it all for you. Hey, what Rogers has put together quite a cast of announcers and sideline reporters. It's going to be a terrific season in the NHL. Old pal Jim Houston coming back to Sportsnet to lead the great cast of play-by-play -play announcers for the upcoming season. Anthony Ghost singled and scored in the third. The Jays have a 3 2 lead. The hits are even at three apiece. Well, the Jays' bats have really cooled off the last two games after pounding on the Cubs pitching. And they did most of their damage against Chicago. In their bullpen. Well, once they got into that bullpen, they really lit things up. Jake Arietta was tough on them, and then Kyle Hendricks was tough on them. Yesterday, Nathan Carnes was really tough on them. There was only four hits in the game yesterday. Yeah, from both teams. Both sides. Neither team really wearing it out. Third and final game tomorrow. It'll feature Chris Archer going to the mound for Tampa Bay against the left-hander Mark Burley. In case you haven't heard, they have flip flop Marcus Stroman and Mark Burley in this next start. So Burley will start on his regular day, which is tomorrow. Stroman will open up the Orioles series. Off speed pitch goes strikes out at six strikeouts for. Jeremy Alex it's the combination fastball inside with two strikes and it comes right back to that change up and Anthony was a little bit out in front and will strike out to lead off the fifth inning. That's a pitch that has to be good for him and that's a pitch that has been good against the left handers lefties off of Helixson this year. 
just 212. That's a bouncing ball right to Loney at first. Two quick outs for Hellickson here in the fifth. Well, that's always something that really confused me as a catcher is Hellickson's got a great changeup and he'll throw it pitch after pitch to lefties, but he doesn't throw it quite as often against right handers. And I think you're really cutting off your nose despite your face. It's a good pitch and why eliminate it? Righty's hitting over 100 points higher than left handers against Jeremy Hellickson this season. They have more home runs also. Jose Bautista picked up an RBI in the third. He now has 97 for the season, looking for his third 100 RBI season. This won't give in to him. He throws breaking balls and fastball counts, and Bautista is aware of that. I think he looks off speed against yep. Alexson. Might look for a fastball right here, and they might give him the green light to see if he can get number 32 and 98. They yeah, had the green light. That ball is cued off the end of the bat. Had a lot of spin on it. Bautista thought it might bounce back into foul ground. Do him a changeup. 81 mile an hour 3 0 changeup. <laughs> Jose got him talking to himself. Jose played with the Tampa Bay Devil Rays in 2004. And there he takes ball four. So he's forward one more time. Second walk issued by Alex Bautista. Appeared in 15 plate appearances, had 12 at bats in 2004. That's the season in which he played with Baltimore, Tampa Bay, Kansas City, and Pittsburgh. All in one season. All in one season. That is a classic example of a late bloomer. Well, and you know what? He was always intriguing because he had so much ability. Baltimore took him from the Pirates in the Rule 5 draft in December of 03. Then he went to Tampa Bay off the waiver wire. And from Tampa Bay went to Kansas City in a purchase deal. And then he was traded from Kansas City to the Mets. From the Mets to the Pirates. Back and forth. He had a lot of ability and a lot of upside and had never been given an opportunity to really blossom. Yeah, all he needed was a chance to play every day. And when the Blue Jays traded for him, they gave him a chance to play every day. Remember when he first came here, he was batting leadoff for him. They, were, they weren't sure where to put him. Adam Lind has walked in at a fielder's choice. the wall Bautista's around second he's headed for third Lind is headed into second they're going to stop Bautista as he could take a big turn around third on the double by Lind two outs two aboard this check in with Jamie Campbell
Well, Chris Young has been a very productive player since joining the Yankees. He looks like the old Chris Young from his Arizona days. Power and speed. He might uh, win Player of the Week award. The way that he is putting together those game winners. And he had a game winner against Tampa Bay on Thursday night, and then had the home run in extra innings to put the Yankees up last night, only to see the Orioles come back and win it. Edwin Encarnacion is 0 for 2 with a chance to build the Blue Jays' lead. I don't think they can give much to hit in this yeah. situation. You got base open and Danny Valencia on deck. And Cal, poorly they missed on those two shots. So yeah, they're not even going to fake yeah. it now. <laughs> and that's a good way to put it. They were faking it. One way inside, one way outside, and now let's. Let's walk Edwin and take our chances with Valencia. Valencia has been swinging a hot bat. So this has the possibilities of backfiring on the Tampa Bay Rays. What's that do as a hitter when they walk that guy ahead of you? Tell you what, it should give you a little incentive right here that you're going to show a little bit more respect. I mean, that's the one thing that you can say to yourself. Hey, they're going to walk them to get to me. I'll, I'll show you. But right now, Joe Madden, he's just going with the numbers. And carnacion has got the bigger numbers than Valencia. Valencia hit a home run against Helixson in the second inning on September 2nd in a scoreless game. He hit a one and two fastball for the first run of the ball game, a solo shot. Now he's got a chance to build on the Blue Jays' one run lead. Remember that the pressure is on the pitcher to come to you. Don't help him out. Shot right to Longoria, and the inning is over. Valencia has grounded out twice to Longoria at third. Now here comes the home hardware cleanup crew brought to you by Natura. Home hardware's exclusive line of safe, environmentally friendly cleaning products. The Blue Jays in 60 seconds for the biggest at bats in every game changing play. Blue Jays in 60 seconds after every game on Sportsnet.ca. And if you had Blue Jays in 60 seconds in last night's game, it might not have taken you 60 seconds to see the highlights. There were only four hits in the entire game and one run. Scott Carson has just informed me that the Total of four hits in a ball game, the fewest in franchise history for the Blue Jays. Four hits total for both teams, fewest in Blue Jay history. The old record was five. You don't even really think about it with Steve's no hitter. You think, well, maybe there was a possibility there, but four hits, two by each club. Jay Happ and 
Nathan Carnes. This is a shot to left field, and Longoria has just gone deep. Evan Longoria, his 21st home run. And his second RBI, and just like that, it's a 3 3 game. Longoria's second career home run against R.A. Dickey has even the score. 20 home runs now for six of his first seven seasons in the big leagues. The first American League third baseman to do that, and it shows you why right there. That knuckleball floating on the inside part of the plate, and he's so quick. His hands stay inside that baseball. That allows him to go through the baseball. Instead of around it, sends it out of here. Now that's the one problem with the knuckleball if hitters do happen to square it up because there's no spin or resistance on it. That ball will really tremble. For Dickey, that's the 24th home run that he has allowed this season, and that's always been part of the program for Dickey. Throws a lot of those knuckleballs, and every once in a while somebody will square it up. And because it doesn't have any spin, it will go out of the park. Ground ball up the middle, Goins to his right. One now. Let's go back and take a look at Evan Longoria and his heat map where he hits his home runs, and that's pretty evident that that inside knuckleball was in a bad spot. Middle in. That's where he. It's his home runs middle in and that's exactly where this pitch goes watch middle in and he takes it out of here. Look at his head. Head stayed right on that baseball it didn't get too big didn't think too hard just put a good swing on. And then on the other side the flip side of that. Will Myers head really flying out of there against Ari Dickey this afternoon. I don't know how much you have struggled but I struggle a lot as a hitter and when you're going through tough stretches you have a tendency to want to do things harder and that's the worst thing you can do and I see a lot of that in Will Myers right now. You can get away with that I think in the minor leagues you can just overpower them just out talent them but in the big leagues you, you have to try easier. Heard that phrase for the first time from Sam McDowell when I was with the Cleveland Indians try easy. And I had no idea what he was talking about. I was a young player. How do you try easy? Well, you slow things down just a little bit. You when know? you think about it, then every once in a while you'll take a swing, and maybe it's a golf club or a tennis racket or a baseball bat, and some of your easiest swings produce the rest best results. The ball driven into center field. Anthony goes ranging on the warning track right up against the wall. Boy, he had confidence on the crack of the bat that he had room to run that one down. You're right. He knew as soon as the ball left the bat. Watch him in center field at the top of your screen, knowing that that ball is not going to leave the ballpark. It's right against the wall. And hauls it in. He plays a good center field. That's what we talked about him on the defense. Got a pitcher that throws a lot of fly balls. Got to have some good defense at center. Defense up the middle has been keen this afternoon. Ryan Goins has made a good play here on a pop up. A couple of good ground ball plays. And now Ghost runs one down in center. Matt Joyce. Ball in the strike. Aaron Loop starting to loosen up. It's a good knuckler for a strike. The line scores are identical. Three runs on four hits for each club. The Rays have committed an error, and that was by the pitcher Jeremy Hellickson. Knuckleball of the afternoon. Joyce strikes out. Evan Longoria with a leadoff home run has tied it. 
Dickey ends the inning with a wicked knuckleball. Watch this one disappear. No chance. Ball game is 3 3, and Hellickson, like Dickey, has allowed only four hits this afternoon. Hellickson is the senior member of this rotation. This is a possible rotation for next year. And you look at the ages of these five starters, it's very encouraging for the long term future of Tampa Bay. Jeremy Ellickson, the old man of that group right there, just 27 years old, coming into his physical prime right there. Don't forget about Matt Moore, who is on the disabled list this season. With the Tommy John surgery and Nathan Carnes, who we saw yesterday, I'm sure he'll figure in the mix next year. Chris Archer will start tomorrow, and Carnes won his first big league game here last night, and his first start as a member of the Rays. Josh Tolley will lead things off and takes one downstairs for a ball. We are in the sixth. It's a three-three game. Two miles an hour with fastball arm action. When he throws you a fastball, I'd look for a change up in the next pitch. I mean, that's what he has been throwing today. And in fastball counts, he don't throw you a fastball. Paul Nart, the home plate umpire, didn't like that curveball. You could see him shake his head as it broke around the outside point. Fastball count. Change up. How do you hit a change up? Well, I think the best way to do it is just look to try and hit the ball back through the middle. You're going to pull it naturally if you're out in front. And that's the best way that I would. Don't commit so quickly. Don't get out on your front foot. Keep your hands back. Think about up the middle. And then just accept the fact that you're going to hit a fastball like that. As long as you can get the bat on the ball and stay alive, you basically want to spoil the fastballs and hit the changeup. It's a tough assignment, but Hellickson uses his changeup like other pitchers use their fastball. And he's trying to get you out on your front foot where your weight is starting to shift out in front. And it takes the sting out of the bat. You end up swinging just with your arms. So you don't generate a whole lot of power. Breaking ball. Big hop for Longoria. One down. Kevin Pilar has struck out twice. He's been swinging the bat well in this most recent stint. And we went back and looked at his 2013 stance and compared it to what he's using right now. Hands were just a little bit higher. The bat was a little flatter. 
2014 the hands are lower and the bat is straight up and down and he went and he worked out with Marlon Byrd and his hitting coach and this is how Marlon Byrd hits he says he feels a little bit more comfortable it takes the tension out of his arms also and his shoulders when the bat is just resting down a little bit lower a la Edwin Encarnacion In the previous stance back in 2013, Pilar suggested that he wasn't really comfortable and he felt like he was going to be late, so he had to start his swing early. And oftentimes he had chased pitches that would bounce in the dirt because he had committed so soon. He, he didn't like that call. No. That ball might have been off the plate. But you're right, he would swing at a lot of pitches. He would it would almost look like he made up his mind that he's swinging. And no matter where the ball was, he was swinging at it. Rhythm and timing, that's that's what hitting is all about. Having that rhythm and timing and with his hands just a little bit lower, he says he can stay back just a little bit more. Rips that one foul. Longoria was hugging the line at third. I think that Kevin Pillar, Anthony Gosa, and Ryan Goins are almost at a point where you have to find out what you have in the major leagues. Like they can't really accomplish much more by playing in the minor leagues. They all put up decent numbers in the minor leagues. They have spent multiple years at AAA. Nothing more to accomplish there. And the biggest leap, if you will, in the minor leagues is from AAA to the big leagues. You're facing good pitching. Day in and day out. Starters, relievers, hits that would fall in in the minor leagues are caught here. So you're right. You have to find out what you have. And it's just not going to be valuable to go down and, and hit 320 again in the minor leagues. Okay, you've done that. You're not challenging yourself. And you know, anytime you do something athletic or Whatever it is, if you're not challenging yourself, you're never going to improve. You've got that pitch covered. And look at those pitches. They're all over the map. And he's been able to foul off the tough ones. You gotta get a chance, or you gotta make a chance for yourself. And when you get that shot at the big legs, you have to take advantage of it. You have to do something where the organization is going to take notice. Good at bat by Pilar. He works Hudson for the walk, and that's his first walk this season. Finger cooked tonight. Order from over 100 menu items at BostonPizza.com. Proud partner of the Toronto Blue Jays. Kevin Pillar with his first walk of the season had started the season with 90 plate appearances without a walk. Mookie's record is safe. 114 plate appearances for Mookie Wilson. Ryan Goins. You look at the rest of that list and Pillar was fourth on that most consecutive plate appearances without a walk. It was Mookie Wilson, Joe Cannon, Raul Chavez, and, and Kevin Pilar, so he has snapped that at 90 games. 0 oh, and 1 to Goins. Steve Jeltz is up throwing for. The Rays, he is the pitcher that gave up the pinch hit home run to Colby Erasmus down at Tropicana Field in that one nothing win early in September. Oh, and two. Another breaking ball and going to strikes out. That's seven strikeouts for Hellickson. 
He's mixed in a few more curveballs today than we have seen recently. And here's one of them right here. That's that spike curve, that index finger right on the tip of the baseball. He spins it off his middle finger and he picks up the strikeout with the curveball as Ryan Goins swings through it. Hellickson had eight strikeouts against the Blue Jays right here at Rogers Center back on the 23rd of August. That is his season high. Anthony goes his one for two. Three three ball game. Tampa Bay won last night's game one to nothing. Just when you think Hellingson is going to throw it harder, he throws it easier. Softer. Again, if fastball counts, he's going to throw you a breaking ball. You can go up there and start looking for off speed pitch if you want. Anthony goes just turned 24 early in August. He has spent parts of three seasons in Triple A. Has over 1,100 plate appearances, over a thousand at bats. In Triple A, he has hit 259. Oh, and two. Bounced in. Pilar got a good read on it. He moves into second base. As soon as that ball hit the dirt, he took off for second. You can see the flight of the ball when you're at first base. And if you read the ball in the dirt, you can take off. You don't have to wait and see if the ball is going to get away from the catcher. He bounces it. Pilar right away and then aggressively. In the second base. He represents the go ahead run. Gets himself into scoring position with two outs. Foul tipped into the glove of Molina. That'll end the inning. A couple more strikeouts for Hellickson here in the sixth. He has eight so far. We'll move to the seventh. It's a 1 1 game. Start for Dickey here in the second half of the season. Four hits, three runs allowed. 
through six innings, and this continues a great stretch for the starting staff. The last 18 ball games, look at that earned run average, 245. They've only allowed 33 earned runs coming into this game here this afternoon. Opponents hitting 220, only six home runs, and they've averaged almost seven innings every time they go out on that mound. Those 18 straight games where they've thrown at least six innings, that's the most since 1998 when they went 19 straight games with at least six innings from their starter. Nothing wrong with the starting pitching. They have really stepped it up here in the second half. You now, Escobar. Takes the first pitch outside Escobar. Grounded out and lined out. He's over two. Two and zero. Oh. Escobar hit a couple of home runs the other night in New York off of hanging breaking balls. I think he's looking to do some damage again right here, leading off the seventh. Escobar catches the inside corner. Two and one. They are in the seventh. Another. Low scoring game. Brett Cecil starting to loosen up in the Jays bullpen. Found. Maybe the most challenging pitcher for John Gibbons to really get a read on is R.A. Dickey. You know, you can see other pitchers where they might elevate a pitch, or you can see a few miles an hour slower, but for Dickey, every inning's almost the same. Everything looks the same, and they've been using that 100 pitch limit also, but he gets better, I think, once he gets to 100 pitches. Escobar called on. With that knuckleball inside, it's another strikeout for Dickey, his fifth. Escobar thought it was ball four. This one tumbles up. Josh Tolley bring it back in for him. Right on the corner. Strike. It sure was, and the difference between where it passed the home plate and where it ended up in the glove was dramatic. Really emphasizing how much movement that ball has. Kiermaier goes after the first pitch and hits it a mile high. Goins makes the catch near second to them. But that called the strike on Escobar. The ball crossed over the inside corner, hit the plate, and then really broke down to the glove side of Tolley. Just another example of how dramatic that movement is. Two outs. Number nine hitter is Jose Molina. He bounces it foul. Brad Moxberger is standing by. He's ready down in the Rays bullpen. This might be it for Jeremy Hellickson. Looks like Moxberger's coming in the game. Hellickson just kicking back. Hellickson, this would just be the fourth time he has completed six innings in his 11 starts. He had loose bodies removed from his elbow in January. It took him a long time to get up to speed and didn't make his first start until the 8th of July. To right. Bautista is there. The inning is over. Dickey is cruising now. Three up, three down in the seventh. It's a 3 3 game.
gets congratulations from the skipper that indicates his day is done. He is in line for the win. He cannot lose it if Blue Jays can score a run here. Jeremy Hellickson, he too is out of the ball game. He goes six innings. Allows four hits, two earned runs, three runs overall. And the starters are both out of the ball game. So now it's a battle of the bullpens. And the first on for the Rays will be Brad Boxberger, the Rangers. What a nice pickup that the Tampa Bay Rays got when they got Boxberger in that trade. He's had a very good year for him. He throws hard coming out of the bullpen. He gives them a, a big arm at the back end of the bullpen. 5 and 1, 201 earned run average. Left is hitting 101. 14 strikeouts per nine innings. Look at that. 100 strikeouts in just 18 walks this year. It's a combination fastball changeup that he will throw to get to all those strikeouts. So he will try to come in here in a 3 3 ball game. Boxberger is making his sixth appearance against the Blue Jays this season. He has given up seven hits in just three innings of work. August 23rd, right here at Rogers Center, he was roughed up, didn't record an out, gave up two runs on three hits and a home run. Leadoff man Reyes takes one outside. Ball on a strike. Strike two. It's an off speed pitch. Boxberg came into the game in the seventh inning, and after one was retired, he faced that one in front of Sean, gave up. A double to Encarnacion, a homer to Deanna Navarro, a double to Colby Rasmus, and he was out. The Blue Jays tied it in the seventh. They took the lead in the seventh. The Rays tied it in the ninth. The Blue Jays won it in the bottom of the tenth. One of the rare times that he has struggled this year. That time fastball painted down and away for the first out. 101 strikeouts now. That ranks him second in Major League Baseball for relievers in strikeouts. Jose Bautista has been on base twice. He single drove in a run in the third and walked in the fifth. Jose Bautista is in an elite group of Blue Jay hitters that have hit 200 home runs. Carlos Delgado is the leader of the pack. Vernon Wells had 223, and Bautista with 200 certainly has Carter and Bell within his sights. Chase that high fastball. He did it faster than all those guys. That's the impressive part about that. Bautista hit his 200th home run in his 791st game with the Blue Jays. Two and two, you gotta believe he's gonna get a changeup right here. Jose is such a smart hitter. Uh, he'll go up there thinking right along with him. Molina wants the fastball. 95, but well out of the zone. Lind is on deck. Swing that was up and in. Number six was way inside off the plate. Rushed that one just a little bit. And the lower half was not working with the upper half for Boxberger, and that ball got away from him. They wanted that ball down and away, and it rushes up and in. And Jose trying to get out of the way. Fouls it off his back. Bautista takes another walk. That's two this afternoon. 
He's been on base three times. That'll bring Lynn to the plate. Lind has reached base three times as well. And he's walked, reached on the fielder's choice, and hit it up. Once again, a low run, low hit game. It's 3 3, both teams with four hits apiece. There were only four hits in total in last night's game, and one nothing win for Tampa Bay. Molina sent something that he wants to talk over with Boxberger. He's flying open, leaving everything yep. to the arm side. He's not really finishing up his pitches. Rushing just a little bit. Uh, catchers act like pitching coaches. They can see it. They've got the best seat in the house. They can sit back there. They can see if he's flying open or if his arm's not catching up with him. Might tell him to stay closed a little bit longer. And strike out in a walk. To start off the seventh inning. Came right back with that changeup and look at the difference. He made an adjustment from one to two, and then changeup was centered cut. Evens accounted one and one. Boxberger a little bit off on his command early in this appearance. He was able to strike out Reyes, but then walked Bautista. There's a drive to center and deep. Kermeyer is back, and this ball is gone. Adam Lynn. Just his fifth home run of the season, his third against Tampa Bay, has broken the 3 3 tie. That looked like another changeup that was out over the plate. Boxberger's last appearance was a couple of nights ago in New York where he gave up a two run home run to Martin Prado in the game that the Rays would eventually lose. This time comes in at a tie game against Adam Lynn. Look like a change up over the middle of the plate instead of trying to open up and try to pull the ball out of the ballpark. He stayed right with that one and drove it the other way. Big hit for the Blue Jays. We mentioned Boxberger on the 23rd of August did not retire a banner. He came into that game, gave up a double, a two run home run, and a double. This time he strikes out one but gives up the two run home run to Lynn.
since June 23rd, 124 plate appearances, has given R.A. Dickey the lead. Change up out over the plate. You can see it's away from him. And again, instead of trying to pull it, he goes right with it and through it. And what? Kiermaier, the center fielder. Deke like he's going to try and catch that ball. But it lines out over his head and out of the ballpark. A big hit for the Blue Jays. Big home run for Lynn. Big home run for R.A. Dickey. Puts him in line for the W. 5-3 Blue Jays. Steve Jeltz, a new pitcher in for the Rays. He is making just his sixth appearance. That loss came at the hands of Kobe Rasmus and the Blue Jays in that one nothing extra inning game down in St. Petersburg. Rasmus had a pinch hit home run in the top of the 10th. Five appearances since being selected from Durham. That was on September the 1st, and he came in in that series the Blue Jays had at the beginning of this month. Another big arm. See you later and way back. <laughs> Feeling that Edwin Encarnacion was sitting on first pitch fastball? I do. Helps <laughs> with a big arm, first pitch, and Edwin crushes that one. That one measured at 434 feet. Wow. time the Blue Jays have gone back to back this season and that was a no doubter. Wells has a big arm first pitch four seamer right there watch Edwin just reach back and launch that one out of here number 31. Danny Valencia with a base hit. Well, you want to see a pretty home run swing? Watch this one. And everybody knows that that's leaving. Yep. So you're telling me there's a chance. <laughs> there's a chance that that was a bomb. 6-3. Jays. Valencia at first. Still just one out. There goes the runner. The hit and run is on, and Valencia is tagged out. Totally tried to make contact. The pitch was up around his neck. Well, nothing you can do as a hitter right there. Sacrificial. Just trying to make contact. Not a good pitch to to hit, but you've got to do something to try to distract. The catcher, no distraction there as Molina guns him down. Two outs. Three runs in this inning, three runs in the third. Pull the foul outside of first. Tully has gone 0 for 3. He lined up for the shortstop in the fourth inning. The Blue Jays have beaten up on the bullpens recently. Really did a number on the Cubs bullpen. Last night they couldn't handle Jake McGee or Grant Balfour, but tonight they have jumped on Boxberger and Jeltz. There's the strikeout. That will end the inning, but the Blue Jays get back to back home runs. 
Adam Lind with a shot to center, and then Edwin Encarnacion on the next pitch. Says, how about back-to-back? Home run number 31 for double E, 6-3 Jays. Cecil comes into the ball game. This will be his 61st appearance. Cecil has really been pitching well of late. 21 of his last 22 outings have been scoreless, and he's recorded at least two strikeouts in 10 of his last 15 outings. Fastball has been good. His breaking ball has been even better. 13 strikeouts per nine innings. He has been coming in and he's throwing strikes. He's throwing hard. 61st appearance for Brett Cecil, and that breaks his record for most games in a season which he set last year when he got into 60 games. Ben Zobris will start things off here in the eighth. Zobris continues to bat right handed. He's been on the right side all afternoon. Arie Dickey another fine outing for Dickey and another fine start for the Blue Jays rotation. Tom Halyan down at first and no swing. Cecil threw that good breaking ball. Boy, his curveball has been wicked lately. He has been able to come in and has inherited a lot of base runners in tough situations, but done a terrific job. Last worked on the 10th, two thirds of an inning, had a walk and a strike in that game against the Cubs. And when he gets the rest that he needs, and you can do that in September with all the the arms that the Blue Jays have down in that bullpen when he has that proper rest that breaking ball is just so much better and his fastball's got some some life to it 93 94 miles an hour with that fastball that time Zobris went around Balls, two strikes, the leadoff man here in the eighth, Ben Zobris. Zobris doubled and scored the first run of the game in the first inning. Over Goins into center. Zobris with a leadoff single. Now it's time for drive of the game. It's brought to you by the all new 2015 Honda Fit. Fit your lifestyle, fit your fun. Fit, whatever. This afternoon, it's going to be drives of the game. First of all, Adam Lynn with his fifth to dead center field up and out of here. 
for the home run. And then Edwin, first pitch swinging, number 31 on the season. And that's a bomb over 430 feet. Into the second deck here at Rogers Center, the drives up the game. So with a leadoff single, the pinch hitter will be Sean Rodriguez. He's batting for David DeJesus. Rodriguez is a threat. He's got 11 home runs. That's a career high for Rodriguez. Bounced in the dirt. Cecil has really had the upper hand in this matchup. Sean Rodriguez just two for 15 going head to head against Brett Cecil. He had one of his best outings, I think, when the team was down in Tampa Bay. If you remember that, he came in in a tight, tight situation, needing strikeouts. Came in, his breaking ball was devastating. I believe he struck out the side. Blue Jays got out of that one. He came into the ball game and gave up a couple of singles. Zobrist and Myers, and then struck out Geyer. Walked on Gore to load the bases, and then struck out Forsyth and Rodriguez to end the inning. And here he loses Rodriguez, so the first two reach. So the Blue Jays have plenty of arms, and there's a new arm in their bullpen now that has pitched very well, Brandon Morrow. Since his return off the disabled list has worked out of the bullpen and he has been sharp. So Pete Walker will take the walk to the mound to give Morrow a few more pitches to get loose. The outing he referred to with Cecil striking out the side was in that scoreless game and that pushed it into extra innings and then Colby Rasmus hit the home run. It's on the 23rd of August at Tropicana Field. So now Evan Longoria will step to the plate and he represents the tying run. Longoria has an RBI on a ground out. He has doubled and homered. Two for three with a pair of RBIs and a run scored. And the winner in that game was Brett Cecil. Because of that, now he's got his work cut out for him. Longoria. You talk about matchups, and we just mentioned Rodriguez had his problems with Cecil. Longori is 12 for 23 against Cecil. That's a 5.22 average. A couple of home runs among those hits. Five miles an hour, and he tipped it away from Longoria. Everything has been hard, hard fastball, hard breaking ball. Took a little something off of that one. Well, what a good pitch! Longoria strikes out first out of the inning, and Cesa wins that matchup. Breaking ball once again. And it's in the dirt. It's in a good spot with two strikes. One and two counts. See if he can go fishing on that breaking ball, and he does to pick up the strikeout. That ball was harder than his normal breaking ball. It looked like it was in the mid 80s. James Loney, the first baseman. He cuts on the first pitch. This is where Cecil has really been good in the second half of the series season when he has either put runners on or inherited base runners. He's been able to strand them. He's pitched out of some sticky situations. That's that good breaking ball coming into play. And a good fastball. That one was 93. It looked had a little late movement on it also. Mm -hmm. 
breaking ball in the dirt. The Blue Jays bullpen has had their problems pitching against the American League East teams this season. They have combined for a 448 earned run average against the AL East teams. You look at the rest of baseball, they have pitched to a 392 earned run average. And these are the teams that obviously you see most frequently. Ground ball, Reyes to Goins, back to first, what a double play. Reyes went to his right, quickly fired a strike to Goins, who made quick work around the bag at second. Say so, a leadoff single and a walk, then the strike out of Longoria, and then a 6 4 3 double play to end the threat. We'll go to the bottom of the eighth. The Blue Jays have a 6 3 lead. Now it's time for Blue Jays Central Update. Here's Jamie Campbell and Greg Zahn. We move to the bottom of the eighth. Brett Cecil was able to strand a pair of base runners in the top half of the inning. The Blue Jays still have a three run lead. R.A. Dickey is the pitcher of record for the Jays. Looking for his 13th win. The third relief pitcher to work for Tampa Bay is Brandon Gomes, who is making his fifth appearance against the Jays this season. He was recalled from Durham on September 1st when rosters could expand. And Gomes is in his third stint with the Rays this season. You saw his numbers fastball, breaking ball. He'll split change. He's got a split finger changeup that he'll use to get outs with. Gomes. 17 career games against the Blue Jays. 16 innings, 21 strikeouts. He's got a little cutter, a sinking fastball, and that split change, as you mentioned there. Kevin Pilar walked his last time up. Oh, and two on the ground. Escobar in time, one down. Ryan Goins, he has gone 0 for 3. He struck out twice, but in the third inning, he struck out and reached base on a wild pitch. Came around to score. Mm. 
Goen scored the first run of the game in the third inning for the Blue Jays. That was their first run, part of a three run third inning. It is right there. Ryan not real happy with those first two calls by the home plate umpire. Thought one was low and one was outside, but he's got a battle now. 0 oh and 2. Gets a piece of that pitch and might have fouled it right off the catcher. Casey Jansen is loosening up. It's a three run game. Jansen has 22 saves this season. John Gibbons has not really had to go deep into the bullpen given the way the starters have pitched of late. 19 straight games where they pitched six or more innings. Seven more today from Dickey, so you only have to cover two. You can bring one of your setup men in for the eighth inning, and if it's a safe situation, you've got Jansen. Well, things have worked out nicely this afternoon for the Jays. Only two going games going on as we speak. New York is in Baltimore playing. The Orioles the Yankees have a 3 1 lead as they hit in the sixth. Going to strikes out. Third time he's gone down on strikes. Two down. A tumbling splitter right there, down and in. He sees it. His eyes are right there, and then it just gets right underneath his bat. For four this afternoon with a couple of punch outs. The Jays have struck out 11 times this afternoon. Jeremy Ellickson, the starter, had eight strikeouts in six innings. He left the ball game in a 3 3 tie. R.A. Dickey left the game in a 3 3 tie, but the Blue Jays scored three runs in the bottom of the seventh, and he is in line for the win. Two and one to Anthony Ghost. Blue Jays have six runs on seven hits. The Rays three runs on five hits. The Blue Jays hit back to back home runs in the seventh. Adam Lind and Edwin Encarnacion went deep. Strike two to Ghost. Amazing when they hit the home runs, what it does for their offense. This makes everybody look good. That was a good sign right there to Adam Lynn went deep to center field. Change up out over the plate. He stayed right with it. Drove it out of the ballpark. Ghost strikes out. Two strikeouts in the inning for Brandon Gomes. We'll go to the ninth. The Blue Jays have a 6-3 lead. Casey Jansen into the ball game, Looking for the save. Number 23 at stake for Jansen.
Casey Jansen into the ball game. This will be his 45th start, one more than his number, and he's looking for his 23rd save. Has pitched good baseball for the Blue Jays this year. Had a couple of rough outings, and that's why that ERA is inflated just a little bit up over four. But he's 22 for 27 in save opportunities this year. Got a chance here against Tampa Bay to get number 23. This is his seventh appearance against the Rays. He has saved three of his four previous save opportunities. Will Myers helps him out, goes after the first pitch, and flies out to center. Rogers customers can watch the Blue Jays on Sportsnet live on your smartphone. Visit RogersAnyPlaceTV.com slash sports to get started. Blue Jays trying to even the series at a game of peace. They were losers in last night's contest, one to nothing. Matt Joyce has gone 0 for 3. The Rays have certainly seen enough of Casey Jansen over the years. They have. He has pitched against them a lot, 46 games, and they know that he's around the plate. He's going to try and get that fastball down and away. He'll cut it in against the right-handers, mix in a curveball against the lefties. Eight for nine and saves in his career. There's that little cutter right on the inside punt. We want to remind you after this game, stay with us as Jamie Campbell and Greg Zahn will break down this ball game have a look how the Blue Jays stack up in the wild card race and they'll probably break down the Yankees and the Orioles and that's all coming up right after this ball game. Joyce strikes out two down. Looked like Casey took a little something off of that ball that time. Yeah. Splits it up a little bit. It's just 84 miles an hour. Took a little something off. It falls going down and away from Matt Joyce. And he picks up the strikeout. Joe Madden is out to talk to the home plate umpire, Paul Mauer. And it appears as though Matt Joyce may have been ejected. And Joe Madden wants to come out and get the details. Something to say, and that'll do it. Right there. Something to say about the strike zone today. Anytime you question the strike zone, that's a quick ticket to the showers. So Joyce has been ejected as you know Oscar takes a pitch. You know, years ago you could say almost whatever you wanted to say as long as you were walking back to the dugout. You just kind of leave it between the umpire and the player. Nobody really noticed it. That's the case in the longer. Two down, ball and a strike to Escobar. Casey Jansen trying to wrap it up for R.A. Dickey. Boy, Payne. He's back to Payne. Escobar reaches and lines it down the right side. Bautista over quickly to cut it off. A two out single for Escobar. His first hit of the afternoon. Pretty good pitch by Casey Jansen. Right where he wanted to throw it. It's just Escobar went out there and had plate coverage and got it. Down and away. Just slashes it the other way. So Jansen. Working out of the stretch with Kevin Kiermeyer stepping in. Kiermeyer is one for three. He singled and scored in the third inning.
There goes the runner. Escobar will take second. It'll be defensive indifference. Blue Jays not concerned about Escobar. Kiermaier has 13 hits against the Blue Jays. This is his first year facing the Jays, and he has had a lot of success against them. It really opened up some of the eyes on the way he plays the game. Now well, this is the guy the Blue Jays have been looking for all afternoon. Swings on the 2 0 pitch and fouls it out of play. Here, Myers 13 for 30 against the Jays this season. Two outs. This should do it. Popped up into left field. Pilar is there. Ball game. The Blue Jays win it 6 3. Casey Jansen picks up his 23rd save. R.A. Dickey picks up his 13th win of the season. Offense busted out this afternoon. Seven hit six runs. The home runs came back for the Blue Jays. Adam Lynn and Edward Encarnacion doing the trick. Three runs in the third, three in the seventh. Blue Jays pitching and defense took it from there. Series is even at a game of peace. We'll be back tomorrow afternoon. 6 3 Blue Jays, a couple of home runs back to back. Stay tuned. Here's Jamie Campbell and Greg Zahn. Thanks for watching.